Margaret Christakos is attached to this earth. So begins her bio, lovely. Born and raised in Sudbury, Ontario. She has worked as a poet, a writer, an editor, an instructor, and poetry culture builder in Toronto since the late 1980s. So no small thing. Her substantial body of work includes nine collections of poetries, numerous chapbooks, a novel, and an inter-genre memoir. Margaret has been shortlisted for the Trillium Book Award, the Pat Lowther Memorial Award, and has received the Relit Award for Poetry, as well as the Bliss Carmen Award. Space Between Her Lips, the poetry of Margaret Christakos, was published in 2017, thanks to the Laurier Poetry Series. Margaret has held appointments um, as writer in residence at the University of Windsor, uh, Western University, my alma mater, um, Public Library, and the University of Alberta. In 2018 to 2019, she was the Barker Fairly Distinguished Visitor at University College and University of Toronto. With this impressive career, she's also an associate faculty with the MFA program in creative writing at uh, the University of Guelph Humber, and has taught widely, uh, most recently at Ryerson University. Um, a wonderful poet. Um, please join me in welcoming, I believe from Toronto this evening, Margaret Christakos. Christakos, thank you. Thank you, Cecily. It's uh, wonderful to have this online reading to celebrate. Thank you very much, Kevin Williams and Spencer Williams and everyone else at Talon. To my editor, Katrina Strang, it was a delight to work with you and you really made me uh, move the text to its final form with lots of support and patience. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to uh, especially thank um, Lewan and Mercedes and Arlene. Uh, it's really an honor to read with you here today across these distances and to bring our texts into community together. I'd like to thank some other writers in my community. Thank you to Catherine Mockler, thank you to Janice Williamson, Sonia Greckel, thank you to Marilyn Dumont, um, thank you to Christopher Keep. These are all people who had something to do with my uh, accessing a couple of writing residencies that were extremely creatively um, generative, and I, I thank you all. Passing on information does not make us remember it. Something has to happen inside the organism for memory to occur. For something to occur in memory, the skin is a membrane. For something to touch my insides, I have to involve it in movement. Information moves when it seeps through time and becomes material. Memory occurs in the dwell or the repercussion. When the wind gathers, it's clearly full of information. Pull some cotton over your body. Imagine it's made of language which used to go on outside the head but now swirls from gaze to gaze with a new efficiency. I'm passing you on this message and don't think it's casual. This is pure steam. I think you should read it. Charger 2. What you are is fully charged, ready to roam. You are ready for a decent amount of time. Good to go. Full of juice. Look at that white bar, beautiful thing. Sorry, is that a plug there? Between your skin and the wall? Great, 10, 15, awesome. It's what charges you up, what changes you down to up, up to down, how the spark gets in the plug, how the sparks leap the void, why we speak how usage peaks. Hold that thought. Go over to your mother's grave. What? Go cover your mother's space, her brief pause on the planet, all of her after effects. Go hold your body over hers, like a drone observing what's on its path out of the past toward a core source. She was. Now she's possible. Really? I'm listening for the little ding that means ready. Charger three. Go to binary categories and fuck with them. Pump out a little tertiary ambiguity. Just also sound out listening to that wind hiss 
like a shore on fire with a herd of cattle thirsty for fresh grass. More like Colville's black stallion, airborne and charging an obsolescent train. God bless the pissed off skateboarder trespassing the track, zero devices in her backpack. It's dusk, she couldn't care less. She doesn't think about you anymore. Let her float offline. Thrust forward into memory, measuring chaos as chasm. Who are you gonna call after so politely asking them all to respect your privacy? Who do you bet will be there when the fence flips on its side and a flock of crows charges the bandstand? Isn't it eerie? Charger four, go into a quiet room, just fill it. Overcome all the circuits we're sure are tracking the true winner. Get outside of a cup of sugar. I heard it coming. I heard it. Why didn't you file a warning shot or snore in the dream remake? Turn a clear profit or what's stopping you? Charger 5. Can I cease and desist you yet? I'm right here like a socket in reverse, remembering when you were just a baby, and that day we hid in a closet, cowering as if the rush of water under the front door would evaporate if left to its own attention span. From Charger 7. Among poplars, with light, measuring anecdotes. Blizzard, it exists as static enough. Innards, obvious, text bodies in a bit, frosted out how we mattress, potty mouth, home off. Hobbled our particular intimate in Broglio, virtual frame, coming on, pulsate, electric society, monogamy, our fondness without seasons, a test pattern, oscillating, sizzle, volt, melt. Charger 8. If you are what's the of plugging back into with all seriously to be retrieved handful once warm explain it to our made this special trip Sunday no all of us about to die point that massive panel the tubes and the hissing what's in another of your loved Flesh, please, assessors who've in on a less weird ears. Charger 9. Beyond the windowed rectangles we know are encasements. Cardinals seem to be chirping in synchrony, which clatters against the tilted planes of blue and white and sun-illuminated air. This is a meadow without smell, amphitheater beyond glass. Like a cadre of memories of my mother's way of doing up a living room, that vague cloud of smoke, centrifugal mirage of the vinyl she liked to play on Sunday morning, Sinatra and Roberta Flack. You miss the bodies of your parents so intensely that a window serves a purpose in the past left for priests and Ed Sullivan, framing his magic moments of the really big reveal. It could be there 15 minutes of recuperated embodiment, honored guests in the funhouse that Lazarus likes to open to the commoners after the raiding season relaxes. How they acceded to television and local political updates as the two-way mirror between them glinted their decades of mutual witness. But you don't define 
the livid convergences others call their lives. You just persist with your own willingness to walk into frame, hear birds nibbling back the skin of this momentary retrieval, this resurgent tune's winged idea of the stranger dimension singing our lives on replay. And now I'll read from the text uh, that is the coda to the book. The blue day is violent, if violence is the off-guard measure of time. For counting today began at 4 a.m., yet still sticks in my throat like the milky cloud of a feeling that wishes to be dumped from a new condo crane onto a phantom underground river, maybe Garrison Creek at about the juncture where Bloor meets Christie, near where I began my tenure as a ghost. Not that you die, but I wanted to. What kind of a grievance swings at my ankles, like the artificial intelligence you burn in a fireplace in the midst of a city without enough trees left to breathe? I leave myself dangling in the rush hour, and people say, look, at that dark balloon caught on the crane hook, how inconvenient for the operator. That large swaying purple bag in the shape of a sad carcass. Somebody please cut it loose. They bellow below like they're wearing a pop song as a mouth guard. What to do, swallow or spit? Each note is the interval of a violent time now that bright-lit offices stay up and ready despite the perpetual flooding. But I am no future ghost, only a comical gif strung up by the knees on a crane hook, a sway over Ossington, while everyone heads for lattes. Such a blue sky, such a dark body shape in this palm, entirely made up and hoisted, like a large force-fed bat, gloomily swooping above the buried waterway. Underneath us, the network of rivers persisting, their pull toward the huge lake, circulatory yank toward the moon, the tug of grievance for all the burials. Why was it so attractive to the modern city to stymie and reroute the natural flow and crest of creeks and streams? Something about money replacing blood, the fiction of financial superiority. Who cares if in 40 years there's a nest egg, but no nest? The present is where we're droning a red chorus, right side down in a flipped harness, trying to prettily hum as a compromise, haunches shaking and charged with the lives yet to come. Thank you so much.